What's your name? Rose. I'm sorry? Rose. Rose? Do you ever get out to uh, oh the improv, the comedy store, the last stop, all the comedy spots? I've been there once. Once? Why only once? I work at a nightclub, so I'm stuck in a nightclub six, seven nights a week. Do you have any comedy in your nightclub or just music? Well, we do have one comedy show one time a week. Well, it's the fastest rising little cottage industry across the country because comedy seems to be the thing, and people like this gentleman work constantly. We're very lucky to get him here tonight on Nighttime, and I think you're going to enjoy him. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Dave Dugan. Thanks a lot. Thanks. Well, uh, boy. I guess I should tell you a little bit about myself. Uh, start at the beginning. I, uh, I got my start probably similar to many of you uh, as an embryo. And uh, <laughs> my name's Dugan. I'm uh, part Irish, uh, part American Indian. So no drinking problem there. <laughs> and I'm a little insecure tonight, I got to tell you. I, uh, I just bought this shirt and uh, looked at it in the mirror before I came out here. And I'm starting to think that uh, maybe it looks a little too much like a hot air balloon. And uh, <laughs> lady that sold it to me, though, she said all the kids will be wearing them, so I'm just waiting to be popular. <laughs> and you guys are great. You dance and stuff. It's outgoing. I'm not, I, oh, I, when I was in school, I was especially shy, and, uh, like, the only dates I had were, like, uh, you know, fix-up dates, blind dates. Those never work. You just go because you want to hurt anyone's feelings, and uh, I didn't want to go out with this girl because she was, uh, you know, I don't want to say fat. I think that's cruel. Uh, she was far too short for her weight. I think that... <laughs> yeah, that must have been the condition. And... Uh, she had a horrible perfume, too. This was a hideous scent. Uh, Ode Live Bait, I think it was. I'm pretty, uh, I'm pretty sure that's what it was, because pretty soon seagulls were pecking at the windshield of the car. Uh, they didn't know exactly what was in there, but they pretty much had to have it. And, um, yeah, I'm not without flaw myself, I'll admit. I've got, uh, I've got problems. I've, well, I'll just tell you, I'm a drooler. And, uh, well, sorry, this is true. Uh, two or three nights a week or whatever, I, I never know when. I just, I can't control that flow of saliva when I'm sleeping. And, well, they say a man's home is his castle. I, I guess I believe a man's pillow is his moat. And, uh, and I got flat feet, so it makes it hard to participate in certain sports. Uh, plus, when I'm walking down the beach, it's just really, you know, hard to pretend I'm cool when I have to wear corrective thongs. And uh, so the beach hasn't worked out at all. I've gone twice to the beach, and both times I've been hassled by mimes. And uh, I don't want to offend you in case you like mime. And maybe I just don't understand it. That's probably it. But one of these guys came up to me, you know, doing all that stuff they do. You know, After he's done with his little skit, then. And so, what do you do? Uh, uh, try and buy some imaginary food now, uh, Marcel. But uh, I like about everything but mine, though. Any kind of entertainment. Movies are my favorites. I, uh, scary movies, I go see them all. Like, even real low budget ones, you know? Cause, I saw this chainsaw movie that was uh, not the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. It was a real low budget. A killer had a chainsaw, but it was a plug-in model. And uh, <laughs> all he had was a five-foot cord. So uh, every time he go after somebody, he was jerking the plug out of the wall. You know, potential victims, they were just laughing, throwing stuff at them. Yeah. Degrading him, basically. And my wife doesn't like these movies. That causes a lot of, uh, a lot of conflict. I think she should sacrifice, you know, for me. Because I, I sacrifice for her. I, uh, you know, I go shopping. And... Uh, that's a major sacrifice. And last time I went was uh, Labor Day weekend, and uh, I knew I should have just done what I always do on Labor Day, you know, stay home, watch the telethon, uh, dabble in voodoo. But uh, <laughs> I made a mistake of going. Of course, there's a lot of people, and it was a nightmare. I got lost, and, you know, it's kind of embarrassing, but I started to cry. And um, <laughs> you know, I went to the information booth, though, got a balloon, and then they located her uh, pretty quick, and she was just down at the other end of the mall there at uh, Fredericks of Hollywood. She was uh, you know, trying on one of those uh, slinky bras. You've probably seen him, you know, slinky hanging from each cup. Yeah. <laughs> Which is real handy, because when it gets dirty, and she just rolls it down the stairs, it goes in the washer all by itself. And, uh... No, a lot of you are looking at me right now and saying, uh, I bet this guy's a rock and roller, a real rock and roller. And, yeah, I am. Uh, the Cal Sills, Lake Garrett, Abba. I'm a real headbanger. And, uh... No, I like music today. I do. I... Matter of fact, my favorite music is New Wave, although I think that's a real outdated term. You know, it's not new anymore. I mean, it's been around long enough where it's widely accepted by everyone. Uh, matter of fact, I heard, like, the Talking Heads are going to do a Christmas album this year. And uh, doing Christmas carols like we've never heard them before, I'm sure. You know. Silent night? Holy night? All is calm? All is bright? Wrong young virgin? Let's make a baby now. Let's make a baby now. Thanks a lot. 
Richards. 